Hey guys, Michael here with Hello Cupcake Kids Me, and um, this is a special look at Brandon Tina. I'm doing something a little bit different with this video. <clears throat> I used a voice generator, like one of those uh, text to speech things, to read the story of Brandon Tina. Uh, if you like this type of a video versus me reading to you, uh, please let me know and May I introduce you to Brendan Tina? Brandon Tina, December 12th, 1972, December 31st, 1993, was an American trans man who was raped and later, along with Philip Devine and Lisa Lambert, murdered in Humboldt, Nebraska. His life and death were the subject of the films The Brandon Tina Story and Boys Don't Cry. Tina's murder, along with that of Matthew Shepard nearly five years later, led to increased lobbying for hate crime laws in the United States. Tina was born on December 12, 1972 in Lincoln, Nebraska, to Joanne Brandon. His father died in a car accident in Lancaster County eight months before he was born, and he was raised by his mother. Tina and his older sister Tammy lived with their maternal grandmother in Lincoln, before they were reclaimed by their mother when Tina was three years old and Tammy was six. The family resided in the Pine Acre Mobile Home Park in northeast Lincoln. Joanne received disability checks and worked as a clerk in a women's retail store in Lincoln to support the family. As young children, Tina and Tammy were sexually abused by their uncle for several years, and Tina sought counseling for this in 1991. Joanne remarried once from 1975 to 1980. Tina's family described him as being a tomboy since early childhood. Tina began identifying as male during adolescence and dated a female student during this period. His mother rejected his male identity and continued referring to him as her daughter. On several occasions, Tina claimed to be intersex. Tina and his sister attended St. Mary's Elementary School and Pius X High School in Lincoln where Tina was remembered by some as being socially awkward. During his second year, Tina rejected Christianity after he protested to a priest at Pius X regarding Christian views on abstinence and homosexuality. He also began rebelling at school by violating the school dress code policy to dress in a more masculine fashion. During the first semester of his senior year, a U.S. Army recruiter visited the high school, encouraging students to enlist in the armed forces. Tina enlisted in the United States Army shortly after his 18th birthday, and hoped to serve a tour of duty in Operation Desert Shield. However, he failed the written entrance exam by listing his sex as male. In December 1990, Tina went to Holiday Skate Park with his friends, binding his breasts in order to pass as male. The 18-year-old Tina went on a date with a 13-year-old girl. He also met the girl's 14-year-old friend, Heather, and began regularly presenting as male. In the months nearing his high school graduation, Tina became unusually outgoing and was remembered by classmates as a class clown. Tina also began skipping school and receiving failing grades, and was expelled from Pius X High School in June 1991, three days before high school graduation. In the summer of 1991, Tina began his first major relationship with Heather. Shortly after, Tina was first employed as a gas station attendant in an attempt to purchase a trailer home for himself and his girlfriend. His mother, however, did not approve of the relationship, and convinced her daughter to follow Tina in order to find out whether Tina's relationship with Heather was platonic or sexual. In January 1992, Tina underwent a psychiatric evaluation, which concluded that Tina was suffering from a severe sexual identity crisis. He was later taken to the Lancaster County Crisis Center to ensure that he was not suicidal. He was released from the center three days later and began attending therapy sessions, sometimes accompanied by his mother or sister. He was reluctant to discuss his sexuality during these sessions but eventually revealed that he had been raped. The counseling sessions ended two weeks later. In 1993, after some legal trouble, Tina moved to the Falls City region of Richardson County, Nebraska, where he presented as a man. He became friends with several local residents. 
After moving into the home of Lisa Lambert, Tina began dating Lambert's friend, 18-year-old Lana Tisdall and began associating with ex-convicts John L. Lauter, born May 31, 1971, and Marvin Thomas Tom Neeson, born October 22, 1971. On December 19, 1993, Tina was arrested for forging checks, Tisdall used money from her father to pay Tina's bail. Because Tina was in the female section of the jail, Tisdall learned that he was transgender. When Tisdall later questioned Tina about his gender, he told her he was a hermaphrodite pursuing a sex change operation, and they continued dating. In a lawsuit regarding the film adaptation Boys Don't Cry, this was disputed by Tisdall. Tina's arrest was posted in the local paper under his birth name and thereupon his acquaintances learned that he was assigned female at birth. During a Christmas Eve party, Neeson and Lauter grabbed Tina and forced him to remove his pants, proving to Tisdall that Tina had a vulva. Tisdall looked only when forced to and said nothing. Lauter and Neeson later assaulted Tina and forced him into a car. They drove to an area by a meat packing plant in Richardson County, where they assaulted and gang raped him. They then returned to Nissan's home where Tina was ordered to take a shower. Tina escaped from Nissan's bathroom by climbing out the window and went to Tisdall's house. He was convinced by Tisdall to file a police report, though Nissan and Lauter had warned Tina not to tell the police about the gang rape or they would silence him permanently. Tina also went to the emergency room where a standard rape kit was assembled, but later lost. Sheriff Charles B. Locks questioned Tina about the rape, reportedly, he seemed especially interested in Tina's transgender status, to the point that Tina found his questions rude and unnecessary, and refused to answer. Neeson and Lauter learned of the report, and they began to search for Tina. They did not find him, and three days later, the police questioned them. Sheriff Locks declined to have them arrested because what kind of a person was she? The first few times we arrested her she was putting herself off as a guy. Around 1 a.m. on December 31, 1993, Neeson and Lauter drove to Lambert's house and broke in. They found Lambert in bed and demanded to know where Tina was. Lambert refused to tell them. Neeson searched and found Tina under the bed. The men asked Lambert if there was anyone else in the house, and she replied that Philip Devine, who at the time was dating Tisdall's sister, was staying with her. They then shot and killed Devine, Lambert, and Tina in front of Lambert's toddler. Neeson later testified in court that he noticed that Tina was twitching, and asked Lauter for a knife, with which Neeson stabbed Tina in the chest, to ensure that he was dead. Neeson and Lauter then left, later being arrested and charged with murder. Tina is buried in Lincoln Memorial Cemetery in Lincoln, Nebraska, his headstone inscribed with his birth name and the epitaph daughter, sister, and friend. Neeson accused Lauter of committing the murders. In exchange for a reduced sentence, Neeson admitted to being an accessory to the rape and murder. Neeson testified against Lauter and was sentenced to life in prison. Lauter denied the veracity of Neeson's testimony, and his testimony was discredited. The jury found Lauter guilty of murder and he was sentenced to death. Lauter and Neeson both appealed their convictions. In September 2007, Neeson recanted his testimony against Lauter. He claimed that he was the only one to shoot Tina and that Lauter had not committed the murders in 2009. Lauter's appeal, using Nissen's new testimony to assert a claim of innocence, was rejected by the Nebraska Supreme Court, which held that since even under Nissen's revised testimony both Lauter and Neeson were involved in the murder, the specific identity of the shooter was legally irrelevant. In August 2011, a three-judge panel of the 8th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals rejected John Lauter's appeal in a split decision. In October 2011, the 8th Circuit rejected Lauter's request for a rehearing by the panel or the full 8th Circuit and Bank. Lauter next petitioned the Supreme Court of the United States for a review of his case. The Supreme Court declined to review Lauter's case, denying his petition for writ of certiorari on March 19, 2012 and a further petition for rehearing on April 23, 2012, leaving his conviction to stand. On January 22, 2018, 
Lauter was denied a third appeal by the U.S. Supreme Court.